Somebody may think that there is one ICT concept which will make them instantly profitable, but people have just not figured it out yet. But no, there is one thing, in my opinion, which I think can help you a lot when you're trying to step up your game, trading ICT concepts, and then there's a bit extra to it. So let's get into the video. The first thing which I think is essential when it comes to stepping up your game, trading ICT concepts, is definitely journaling. And the reason behind this is because then you can track your progress and many people, when they trade these ICT concepts or just in general trading, then it is a bit hard to see that you are improving. But when you are journaling, you can look back in your journal, see how you took trades back then, and then compare it to now. Then you will see that you have improved a lot. The way you journal, it all comes down to personal preference. But when you are a beginner, it can get a bit complicated trying to create your own journal. So I'm going to show you what I think is the most effective way for a beginner and also the journal that I started with as a beginner. The first thing we do is to open up a Notion chart. So right here we can see we have Notion and then we want to make a new slide. And then from there we want to type in our journal name. So I'm just going to call it H journal. Then we're going to type in our predictions and then what actually occurred. And this is actually pretty simple. Now, for today's example, we can see that we have relative equal highs, which is pretty much a clear draw on liquidity. And then we also see the price is currently delivering from this fair value gap, and there's a lot of LR, LR. Now, this is pretty clear of where price is going to deliver towards. Price is going to reach for the draw on liquidity, right? So then we're going to take a picture of this, where we can take a screenshot in a Notion or um, trading view, just press copy image, then go to a Notion chart, press on my predictions, and then just type in there and then say, my draw on liquidity is the relative equal highs, right? So that's something you could do. Then when it plays out, so let's see what happens we can see that price actually reached for that draw on liquidity. Then again, we zoom out, take another screenshot, go into our Notion chart, and then set that price took out our draw on liquidity. And then we just copy the image here, and that's how we can do it. We can also do a top-down analysis approach, which I'll now show you for the next example. For the top-down analysis approach, we first have to start on the daily time frame. And then from here, we're going to open our Notion chart. And then we can now type in our predictions for the daily time frame. So let's just say that I think price is going to go lower because we have low resistance liquidity, as we can see right here. We have low resistance liquidity and we have kind of relative equal dose. So then I'm going to type in that my draw on liquidity is the relative equal lows for the day. From there, I'm going to take a screenshot, copy image, and then type that in. Now I have said what my draw on liquidity is. So by the end of the day, we can see that price reached that draw on liquidity. So then I'm going to take a screenshot and then type in what actually occurred. And from there, you can see how over time, you're going to get better at spotting where price is most likely going to target, for example, as these low resistance liquidity and the equal lows. When it comes to doing a top-down analysis approach, you can then go from as we just were on the daily, then you want to move down on the four hour and write your predictions down there, then go down to one hour, write your predictions down there, and you know it goes all the way down to the one minute time frame. And that way you can get an understanding and practice on every time frame, anticipating and also seeing how every time frame is going to react at these key reference points, which we are going to point out in our journal. Now I've just written down what a top-down analysis approach could look like. And here we first start off with the predictions, and then we see our draw on liquidity is the relative equal lows and the low resistance liquidity. Then down here, 
we're thinking that price is going to reach up into a premium fair value gap, which is going to act as resistance to then push price lower, reaching our four hour and daily draw on liquidity. Then on the one hour time frame, price is also likely to reach for the same draw on liquidity and also reach up for a premium fair value gap. Then we move down here to what actually occurred, which we're going to then post after what occurred, of course. And then price took out our draw on liquidity as anticipated on the daily time frame. For our time frame, price reached up into a premium fair value gap, which then sent price lower to our daily slash four hour draw on liquidity. On the one hour time frame, price did indeed reach for that draw on liquidity and also reached up into a premium fair value gap. So that's how a top down analysis approach could look like. When we're going all the way down to the five minute and one minute time frame, we mostly just journal our trade entries. And an example of this would be, let's say that I were to enter based on price closing beneath this fair value gap as we have a obvious draw on liquidity down here. Then I'm going to short and we see at the closure, put stop loss above this high and then target the draw on liquidity, right? Then we're going to take a picture of this copy image. And here on our journal, we're then going to go up to the predictions as we're predicting this trade entry is most likely going to work and send price all the way down to the draw on liquidity. Then we're just going to type in what we see. And from here, we can go back into the charts. And then somewhat is going to look like this or up here. It's going to somewhat look like this when we took a trade entry. Now we're going to play price through, of course. And see that price did indeed reach that draw on liquidity. So then we'll take another screenshot, go into what actually occurred. And then we're going to type in what happened. So that's how a trend entry could be journaled. When we're doing these journals on the lower time frame, we can of course also do the same as we do on the higher time frame, where we take a screenshot of our draw on liquidity and our anticipation, not only trend entries. So an example of this would be right here. You can see price reach up into a fair value gap within here. From there, price starts to reach lower. Then price or we could write in our journal that price is currently making a reaction from the delivery up into the premium fair value gap. And then from there, we can anticipate price reaching a draw on liquidity, right? So pretty simple, we take a screenshot, go into our notion arc, then go up to our predictions. And then we're just going to type in what we think is going to happen, right? And now we just copy our image in, and it's as simple as that. And when we took this picture, price is probably going to look something like this. And now, when we see that price have reached that draw on liquidity and have created a strong delivery from this, we're then going to take a screenshot, scroll all the way down here, and then type what happened. copy our image, and it's sim as simple as that. When you're doing these journals, you have to be very patient as it's all about screen time. And the improvement is going to be a bit hard to see at the first glance, but when you are maybe 
three or four months within your journal, then if you refer back to the first journal you created and then all the way over to now, you can see how you actually improve there. But it's just very important to think that it is gained through experience and experience, of course, takes a lot of time.